the problem of the commonest love cliché. I love you, how can I make those words sound less banal? This common phrase worn out by everyone most every day, this formula turned shallow into water dried by verbal homeopathy, a boring repetition meaning nothing by too much protesting, overused especially by liars. But how can you else express it? That's the question, and the answer will be difficult. Perhaps the best way to express it is by not expressing it at all, but merely showing it by deeds, by poems and by presents. For example, while the truest love expression is within yourself, you only know yourself the real truth of your love. No one can feel your feelings and their worth and how they feel but you yourself. But probably the finest way to give them some expression as correct and true as possible is by creative art, especially by poetry, which was constructed just for subtleties. And if your loved one reads your poetry, accept it as her own, and takes it to her heart, she will, if not at once, by time at least, and constantly more deeply understand it, especially since that's the kind of love that lasts. It cannot burn out and it cannot lie, but it is there and live forever. The Forsaken Lover's Complaint I searched for love, but all I found was loneliness. Behind the masks and ruins of betrayed fidelity, in desperation trying to keep up a smiling face. I searched for virtue, but found none that lasted, and no continuity in promises and vows and faiths. I searched for purity, but there was none that did not purposely seek out the dirt to wallow in it, as if purity was only meant to get debased. I searched for morals, but found only double standards, and where civil courage actually stood up, I found it crucified, or, if it managed to survive, neglected and avoided. I found no love that did not first think of its advantage, opportunist love that only calculated profits, and no love that was not narcissistic, thinking only of herself thinking only of herself. I found in this world no ideals that were not crushed and smothered by reality, the world and power and the bulldozer establishment of ruthlessness and egoism. I found no spirit that did not strive ultimately for material benefits and no religion that was basically not just camouflage for egoism, fanaticism and power, greed, ambition. And where was that goodwill that did not result in only tragedy and evil? Where was beauty that was not corrupted by the ugliness surrounding it and drowned by the environmental ruining of everything, pushed down the drain and trampled on, buried alive? Where is God who they say is the only one where is God who they say is the only one responsible for making all this universal mess and keeping it in order? To these problematic questions you will find one single answer only in your solitude. The concert pianist what care I about the audience and their tastes? The truth is only in the music, and my only job is to be faithful to it, honestly to make it right and render it some justice, and forget about the audience. They are only there to get the message, while I am the messenger who carries with me the divine and lasting message of a better world, of sanity that outlasts all the madness of the world. Compared with music, there is nothing but insanity in everything that is not music that sounds well. So listen carefully, hark well my message, for it is unique and it is difficult, demanding concentration and a total focus, for true music of pure harmony and melody is in all its abstractness and aloofness from reality no less 
than all the voice of God you'll ever hear. The divorcee. Shall I give you up then, since you show so little interest? I am tired of this constant hell of always looking after you, while you ignore me and just fool around, enjoy yourself and drown yourself in shallowness with younger men and lovers, risking clearly to get vulgarized like them in abysses of boring, cynical frivolity. Is that how love must always end? One doing anything just to escape the other's company, abandoning oneself to gaiety of nothingness and ending up in vacuum on the other side with only bitter memories of foolhardy mistakes and finding your most desolated loneliness in the mistaken lover and a marriage failure. Is my friend then to prove right in the most terrible, repellent possible reality that there is no love but in self-love which you fool yourself by calling your ideal? If that is true, then there is nothing in that truth and no God in existence in such truth, no God in such a meaningless reality and in this life no love at all. Then even death is better and all suicides for love have never hesitated to prove such a bleak reality of no love possibility completely wrong as an absurd and total unacceptability. The crucial daily contact. Your love is all you need to have a full infinity of love and happiness crammed into only one resplendent day if only you can have a touch or glimpse of her. That day will then be saved and counted as successful and felicitous and unforgettable. But one day, just one single day, without your love and without any contact with her, will inevitably bring disaster, ruin you and throw you straight into the depths of hell and that day will be lost forever. That's why you must keep up your love in daily contact with her or you will both be lost, you to your nightmares and she to her worse alternatives and now will be the happier for that. There will be only turbulences, griefs and tears instead when you could be so happy if you just maintain your love by keeping just in touch, reminding of each other, to keep up the paradise of your unequalled union, which the whole world is dependent on for your and all the universal harmony and happiness. Abandonment the darkness of your soul is like a menace to our lives, and yet there is no evil in that darkness, only an entrapment in yourself that threatens you much more than anybody else. No wonder you are hopelessly nomadic, seeking constantly to get away from your shortcomings, limiting yourself by closing up your feelings, trying to escape from the dilemma of a personality that has too many anchors in the past to ever get across the sea. The more you try to get away, the more you will get wounded by your fetters. You just have to face the music, let the curtain up, forget about yourself, deny yourself, allow yourself to get away from it, and finally allow yourself your feelings. Yes, get overwhelmed, cry out, you need it, it will do you good and I will help you cry and share your tears and mix your feelings with my own. Thus shall we never leave each other but together drown in blissful abysses of totally forgetting all about ourselves. Political detachment and disdain. Welcome, brave new world of cloning only and no love you loveless phantom of aborted visions of unhuman lies, the twisted nightmares and sick morbid fantasies of Orwell, Huxley, Wells and other artificial futurists who all were wrong, since that accelerating,ly deteriorating unhuman society is only an unnatural alternative to getting too deep into drinks and drugs, 
to unsound dreaming out of work in decadent intoxication. It's a lie that our language is impoverished, that we are all controlled by Rupert Murdoch and his media, since we humans never can be slaves without revolting. Any kind of tyranny and mad oppression in whatever smart disguise can only lead to triumphant rebellion with victorious overthrow. All materialistic thinking, programming and calculating are but lies that always are refuted by the unexpectedness of history. The whole world with its leaders, opportunists, populistic flirters, Pharisees and hypocrites are just a masquerade without a meaning, empty boasts of nothingness and cheapest nonsense, which attracts attention with the same efficiency like anciently the Romans used to be efficient in producing on the vulgar masses by just ranting on the stage and making vulgar noises like of farting. The Dream Chase of Love my love is like a dream that never ends, that varies constantly in shifting hues and colours, always entertaining and dramatic, always shifting into unexpected turns and moods as unpredictable as any weather, ever turbulent, irrevocably always coming up with new surprises and as fascinating as the rainbow as it glows and shifts complete after a rainstorm always promising a never-ending future, full of new surprises of just perfect wonderfulness without end. So therefore I refuse to wake up from that dream. I will cling to it and intently follow it, contributing most willingly to its expansion and development that keeps just filling not just my life but all life around me with a luster of some splendour that just can't be left alone. So please continue, dream of love, to haunt me, never leave me, never let me down in peace and ease, but keep pursuing me and I shall pursue you until the end of my unending loving days. Phantom love the abstinence of you is totally unbearable, a torture worse than any possible hangover, a depression of Grand Canyon-esque dimensions and a melancholy illness with no cure in sight unless you suddenly would come and save me. It's worse than any epidemic, worse than AIDS and all veneric possible diseases, worse than death since one is forced to stay alive and without you. It's like being hamstrung in a hospitable bed, obliged to wear a straitjacket tied up tight, with no air left to breathe and thirstier than any desert. It's like being thrown out into empty space, launched like a satellite to fall forever into constantly increasing darkness that will never spare you any nightmares. So, in short, my love, I cannot live without you. There is no life for me but a life with you, so I shall never leave you, but remain your constant guardian as a crazy spirit hovering around you to protect you with my loving madness against anything in life that is not love. Passionate Poetry and Poetical Passion that poetry is rather dull that only speaks of positive affection, loving the blues and fondling silliness, and goes from bad to worse in purple passages, since sex is never properly described in words. But when your love is set on trial and you have to face adversities, when Romeo and Juliet comes along in tragedy and blood and death becomes ingredients then suddenly the inane love becomes an interesting affair. You need some drama to make love, at all convincing, or you will get pettered out. 
So bring along the drama, the adversities, the jealousy, the raving passion. Raise the green-eyed monsters. Let them swarm up from Moriah and the dens of hell in overwhelming masses. Spice the passion with some sadomasochism. Start tying people to their bedposts. Bring along the chains and scourges. Bring the shameless nudity out in the open. Let the hairs loose in their maximum of length and make some scenes with tears and outbursts and the love will come alive in flashing fireworks and most explosive power. Screw it up with alcohol and drugs. Make orgies out of parties and let them derail and you will have a passion that will set your poetry aflame and flying taking off with jet acceleration, leaving ground forever. And you will be flying on the wings of love and never more be able to do anything without it. A dirge. She sings for love but crying all the time. It is a sad song of deception and a growing disappointment, cheated of her life. Her melancholy is forever growing inwards, in a dreadful pain affecting heart and lungs, like in consumption. But her tears will ultimately release her, since that flow is purging not just her, but all that know her, since her empathy is so exceeding strong and deep, that anyone who can at all perceive it must be touched profoundly and not ever choose to fail her, Although everybody does, since no one understands her grief, the constant flow of tears of blood, for nothing seemingly, but with her cries all nature, half of all the forests of the world, now being gone, annihilated, burnt, cut down and ruined, while all wildlife is increasing in extinction, and the monster man keeps violating Mother Earth, with no consideration, afterthought or sense at all, while she is suffocated by his burning tyranny, transforming forests into cinders so that earth no more can breathe. And you are crying out your tears of blood for all humanity. I cannot dry them up, but only add to them. Universal Vanity What's in a relationship when you remove all vanity? What is the left at heart? What's in the core? What is the centre of all love? What do two people have in common that results in tenderness, affection, codependence, and so on? The problem is you never find the core. All you can do is to forget about all that which does not matter, age considerations, practical and trivial circumstances, all that is just in the way, for souls can always find each other and stick to each other without banal means, since their relationship is written in the stars, and a relationship is always timeless. Ask the spiritists who never lose their touch with loved ones long since passed away, who are as much alive today as hundred years ago. Your love is always and invariably a matter of eternity. Once it is there, it's there to stay and go on living with you all your life and beyond. And the stars confirm it. It's all written in the universe that there is nothing vainer than at all to bother since we all are part of the eternal and the key and contact with it is our love. Some sweaty lines, running out of inspiration, turns you on in perspiration, and your stinking transpiration adds to all that constipation. The light of our love. I love you in the morning where the birds do warbling sing your praise. I love you in the evening when the sunset decks the world in rosy golden colours just for you. I love you in the daytime when the sun delights in you and tries to outshine you in all her glory which she fails in. So she is happy to be glorious just for her delight in you. 
I love you in the night, when passion rules in glowing assiduity and hotness, like the stars can never be outshone. I love you every day, like every light in the whole universe can never be shut out or hindered in its splendour. I love you perpetually and with imperturbable continuity that rather than to tire seems to constantly increase. I love you evermore, there is no end to it, so let's just keep this marvellous eternity, enjoy it and maintain it and just let it shine. Idealism and Allegory Idealism isn't wrong, it's just that it but keeps on flying beyond mortal wits and possibilities, and thus reality refuses to accept her. She is right, though, to just keep on flying, or else she would not be true to herself and to her idealism, and there would be no idealism. That's the risk of true idealism. It has to fly high in the air, and never tire on her restless wings, or she will fall and die and perish and be there no more to be admired by the happy few who understand the frail, unique, imperishable nature of idealism. The Confidential Lover How shall I express my love to you without it being insufficiently expressed and incorrectly? It is vital for its life and for it to at all be able to survive that it is right from the beginning and that it cannot go wrong. You are the only one I love and that I do not wisely but too well. That is the whole truth of the matter. There is nothing else to add. You have my heart and are the only one to have it. And I must regret it only if it would become a burden to you for I am prepared to bear the burden of my love alone if it would be unbearable to you, or for that matter, to anyone who could not bear it or who would not have me. There you are. My prayer is all yours and in your hands, to do with it as my most sacred offering, whatever you would choose, to cherish it and use it or to do without it. I have been refused before and, sorry to say, used to it, so I can take it as a man and will survive, no matter how my lover might be received, misused, manhandled, or refused and trampled down by those who would not understand it. But I will continue loving anyway and be the constant lover ever, for I know my love is of such kind that it can never be a waste. The Quiet Reader I read you well, and therefore I keep silent. Let my silence be the voice of my appreciation. When you are affected, you can't speak. So I am sorry if I cannot let you all know what I read and how I read and how I love it. I have never read a poem here at Poet Bay that I did not find lovable. You cannot waste your time here. On the contrary, you cannot use it better. In a few days I'll be gone for yet another journey, but I hope to stay in touch no less for that, if not with regular and ordinary diligence, at least sporadically, since I never can stop writing. That was all. I love you all and will continue reading you, although unnoticeably and invisibly to you, unless your sensitive poetical antennae will perceive how much I love you all. In the void. Without love, what can you do? Your life becomes a desert, void of flowers. There is no water for your dryness. Common sense is worthless. Like all instruments and indispensable technique, you can just not do anything but languish in a boredom worse than any hell. So any love is better, and that means exactly any love. Let her misuse you and abuse you, use you for her calculation and own ends. Let her deceive you with just anyone, just leave it all to her, as long as you may keep her, 
as your love, for that is all you have, and there is no life and nothing to live for, but a vacuum worse than death without it. And that power thus supremely exercised is not by women or by any partners, but by that phenomenon called love alone. One of those sing songs. I would love to sing a song for only you and me to go a singing all along for lovely things to be. For all bad things must have an end. True love is all we have to spend. We have no other time, my friend, for any other end or trend. So sing along with us this song of true love that just can't go wrong as long as we keep getting on to sing this unforgettable, amazing song. For all bad things must have an end. True love is all we have to spend. We have no other time, my friend, for any other end or trend. Some serious business. There was an old shit house in Tangiers public, of course, and used by everyone, so you could not enter because the whole house was full of shit, so you just had to shit outside, standing on the safe side of the threshold with your ass inside and fire. Children, we are children all that never can grow up since even the most grown-up and most serious must remain and never can become more than a child, like even the most aged and whitish bearded patriarch, like every politician, bishop, bureaucrat, aristocrat and autocrat, inside at heart you never are more than a child. All honours, medals, titles, merits and diplomas are just frippery and cello masks, hypocrisy and fakes since all of life is just a childish thing that constantly grows more so, the more you think that you grew up and mature, and the wiser you think you are getting, the more childish you become. And therefore the old man and the small child are strongest among humans, since they only dare be openly and credibly and naturally childish. Only they enjoy that privilege. Those so-called major ones that acquired a position and responsibility, who are so stupid that they start to take life seriously, must never lose their face, that most ridiculous mask of maturity, since they imagine that they matter, which makes them so utterly ridiculous. No one, therefore, is more human, real and natural than those who all their life through dare prove openly that they were never more than just small children. The winds of the unconscious. The melancholy landscape of our love is harrowed by unfriendly winds that blow the beauty of our dreams to tatters. But on the other hand, these hard and cruel winds just by their hardness blow our love across the world like wind horses that never tire. That's our glory. We give never up. We never tire. We just keep loving through our work of beauty to renew the world and cleanse it from its foulness like the prophets of eternity that might be our unknown mission. Subconsciously, but all the more importantly and powerfully, that's our only job, to keep the course of truth to our vocation, which is only to create through love a lasting world of beauty. <laughs>